Welcome back to The Average Kitchen, guys. Jamie here. I'm taking the wheel for today. We're gonna look at the Ninja Single Serve Pods and Grounds Specialty Coffee Maker. It's a mouthful, just like the drink that we're gonna make out of it. So we just took this out of the box. We were messing around with how it gets put together. Um, I could show you a little bit of that. First thing the book says to do is to prime it. So we filled the water, 24 ounces, like I said. Water goes on the back here. And it said to just hit uh, classic. Um, so I gotta change the size to 24 ounces, like it says. And it said to hit classic. So there's different styles, and I'll go through all this stuff uh, as we go, but there's different styles of coffee you can make here. But anyway, we're gonna prime it, like it says, and hit brew. And as you can see, we have the very Canadian coffee mug here. Us in Canada, very proud of our Tim Hortons. So maybe we'll come back to you here in a second when, oh, things start happening. Here we go. Okay, here we go, we're priming. So according to the book, it seems like this is just your sort of first time use thing, just to prime it and get, uh, I imagine it's to clean out whatever may be in the system from the factory um, to get water into the pump and get things going. So um, I don't think it's every time you brew that you have to do this. It's back to says in the book, after the last step, you are now ready to brew coffee. All right, so we're done priming. So maybe I'm gonna go through some of the features of this thing. And uh, I'll start at the top of the controls and maybe Dan can do our overhead view and kind of show you here. So we've got a few buttons. We've got the power button, style where we can go through classic, rich, over ice and specialty four ounce, which is like an espresso. I'm not a big coffee guy, which, and before you comment, why are you reviewing a coffee maker if you're not a big coffee guy? I don't have to like the taste of coffee to know if this thing works, but feel free to comment anyway. Next is the size. So we go from six ounces, eight, 10, 12, 14, 18 to 24 ounces. And of course the brew, brew button is uh, like your start button. So I'll put it, what do you think this is? 10? Let's say it's 10, because we'll use this cup going forward. Um, the other feature, so it comes with a built-in on the side here, a little scoop. Now the neat thing about the scoop, obviously you're gonna use this to measure um, your coffee, and in our case, to measure coffee grounds that we're gonna use. So right on the scoop, and I don't know if you'd be able to see that, Mark, but it gives you instructions on how many scoops to put in per size of cup you're making, which I think is pretty helpful, otherwise, I would have no idea. Even if I was getting into coffee, and maybe I am now, I would have no idea. So you're saying there's a chance. There's always a chance. Another cool feature of this, is this little storage bin down here. So now this is where the pods will go, which again, we'll use later, but the pod goes in there when you put it in the top. And when I open the top, so these, let's try. So these are interchangeable, so this, is the basket where your uh, grounds will go. And it's interchangeable with the pods. So you can store one and use the other depending on what, what your needs are in, in the moment. So put those back for now. And then of course you got the little catch here for the water, any drippings will go there. The water dispenser at the back and on the side here, swings out. We have a milk frother, which we're gonna try out, which is kind of neat. So I'm gonna start simple here, and I'm gonna put some coffee grounds in there. Columbia's finest. Yeah, we have, what do we got here? Our finest Canadian blend. Now I did a little attention to detail there. I purposely got the Canadian blend. Ground coffee, light medium roast coffee. So since we decided this is 10 ounce, let's go with two, why not? So, generous scoop, so there's one and two. All right, close that up, close that up. Now, we're just gonna do classic. Let's just start easy, start simple. We're on classic. Let's not get crazy here. Yeah, let's not get crazy. Yeah, let's not get crazy. Classic 10 ounce brew. Now, by the way, it was off camera when we were priming it, but it does do a little beep, ding, whatever, when it's actually done. But you can follow the progress bar. 
We were waiting for a bit on that fifth bar, but it then it, it eventually did ding. So we'll see how long it takes for, for this cup. So here we go. We are brewing, as they say. So while this thing's brewing, just want to mention this was $129.99 US dollars. Uh, so for us, that's, I don't know, seven or 800. Just kidding. Probably 175 um, Canadian. Um, we are not affiliated to Ninja, so like I said, we bought this with our own money, so not sponsored. This is just us buying it and trying it to, for you to see if it's worth buying for you. So we're getting there, we're on the fourth bar now, and the f we've got a flow. We've got a real good smooth flow here going. Now it certainly looks like uh, coffee. coffee. It smells fantastic. It does smell good. I won't complain about the smell of coffee. Apparently I'll touch on too, the lights up here. So you can see the little kind of coffee bean light. So that's the, uh, there's a term for it, smart something or other. So it does say in the book that you can expect some splash. Anyway, I don't know what the term is, but it'll, it can tell what, which adapter you have inside. So it knows whether it's brewed or a pod. Okay, I think we're done. Drips are over. It's hot. So maybe what we'll do while that, since we have two mugs, I'm gonna let that cool for a second. Um, let's try over ice coffee. There's an over ice button. We'll try that and see how it goes. So give us a second to get set up for that and we'll be right back. All right, so we got it all set up. So it says to fill your vessel up to the rim with ice. Now obviously there's like half an inch left, but there's plenty of ice in there. Uh, and plus the 10 ounces didn't fill all the way up. So that's pretty much where the 10 ounces went to. Um, we have a timer we're gonna start here. So I'm gonna choose the over ice style. Ice is ready, You've got enough water. I put two new scoops into the um, filter of the ground coffee. So here we go. In the meantime, I'm not looking forward to this. Bottoms up. Now people do, not chugging. Now you hear people drink coffee like that slurping drink when it's super hot. I'm gonna do that. Because apparently that's how you drink coffee. Wow, I think I'm satisfied that we made coffee. So back to the over ice. Okay, we're done. Mark had just had a good question. Like what is the difference between like our classic style that we were making a, a minute ago um, and now over ice? It seems like the difference is because the cup is now the same, basically filled to the same level as uh, the classic. So it must take into account that you filled it to that level with ice and therefore uses less water and presumably it will be less strong, I guess. I never had iced coffee before. Back in one second, I'm gonna change the grounds again, and we're gonna try the milk frother. So we're loaded back up here, and I think for the style this time, I'm gonna try rich. Why not? But in this case, we're gonna test out the milk frother. So it says, and maybe Mark, you can see what I did there. It says to fill your cup about one third full with milk. And it says to basically hold this um, and froth it for 30 to 45 seconds. By the way, I'll mention that the over ice brew took three minutes and 43 seconds. I forgot to mention that a second ago. Oh, okay, we're frothing, I guess. Okay, that's 30 seconds. So, <laughs> now we have the drip factor. Yeah, it does talk about that, so you can take it out that oh, okay. it says to carry it to the sink where you can safely put it in there with no mess so put that back in now bit of a problem here and maybe you coffee drinkers will have a solution so I filled that cup with milk probably to there and now if you can see it's definitely up to there now that it's frothed so I don't think we should leave it at 10 ounces your thoughts mark so lower Yes, there's lower. Let's just do six. All right, let's try six, and we'll try rich and uh, brew. So see how that goes. In the meantime, I'm gonna try iced coffee, which I've never ever tried in my life. So here we go. 
Well, much better. I will say that I would take that any day over the hot coffee that I tried. It tastes like coffee and it's cold. And there's ice in it. So if that's iced coffee, then this thing made iced coffee. So we'll come back when the uh, frothed milk coffee, six ounces, is done. We're done. So just want to mention too, Mark made a good point. Uh, you can see the blade for the frother. It's not actually a blade. It's just like a spring kind of metal thing that spins. So it's totally safe to touch. Like you're not going to cut yourself on that. Kids having this on the countertop because it obviously will just sit. Um, how does it go? It'll just sit on there like that. So kids touch it. There's no, uh, no danger there. So we're done here. It doesn't look frothed anymore, as Mark pointed out. Comment below about froth milk and coffee and whatever, what it's supposed to be, but this is certainly, I'm sure the ratio of milk to coffee in that is not correct. Um, of course, that's subjective and everybody has their own Looks opinion. Like Looks like hot chocolate. So what we're gonna do, while that just cools for a second, and I'll do this on camera. So now I'm gonna switch out the uh, storage. Oops. So I'm just gonna put the filter in our little collector here for now and we'll wash it after and what a catch so now I got the pod one in there so I'll throw that in storage back in now it says right on the box uh, although I found a hard time finding it in the instructions but it does say on the box that it's compatible with K pods so like Keurig pods um, I had at home a Tassimo pod so I'm just going to show that it won't fit just for sort of interest sake so you can see, well, right away, I mean, the pod goes in there. So Tassimo, not gonna work, throw that away. Let's go with something I'm actually gonna enjoy. We got Nestle Carnation, rich and creamy hot chocolate. So we're gonna try that one, put that in. Now what I talked about earlier, the smart technology, you can see the little pod light, so it knows uh, it's a pod and not the grounds. The so size will go back to 10. And so that's kind of cool for the pods too, I guess you can do any type. So we can do over ice and all that stuff. We're just gonna stick with the normal thing. So classic and Mark, do you have a timer ready? We'll do the, the pod. So measure the time for this. Classic pod, 10 ounces, here we go. In the meantime, I'm gonna try this barely frothed, overly milked coffee and see how that is. It's coffee with a lot of milk in it, but it ain't for me. Well, and it did mention in the book, you can do hot froth or cold froth. So we did cold froth, because who cares for us? But if you like hot froth, it just says to uh, put the milk in the cup, throw in the microwave for 30 seconds, 45 to 60 seconds, and then froth it. So this is much faster already. I think we can agree on that. Hot chocolate's just humming out of there. Looking forward to this. Finally, something I'm gonna like. So not even at a minute yet, we're 80% done. Okay. One minute, 23 seconds, so way faster, although I guess brewed coffee, like real brewed coffee, I guess you'd be expected for that to take longer. So I'm just gonna switch this out and let that cool for a second. Now the pod, now it says to uh, wait till it cools down, which is good advice. I'm gonna not follow that advice because we're doing a video. So you can see the hole in it and the hole in the bottom. So next, Mark, your choice. We got uh, regular coffee, which maybe that maybe we'll do that, but French vanilla cappuccino, Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons, Let's not just sponsored. Go regular coffee to start. Okay. Regular coffee went in. We're gonna keep it classic. Um, 10 ounces again. And brew, we'll see how the regular coffee comes out. In the meantime. This is gonna be hot, but I'm gonna try the hot chocolate. Caution for the slurpy sound. It smells good. Wow, it's hot. Almost burned my tongue, maybe did. It's excellent. Not a review of the hot chocolate, but it did it. It did it perfectly. All right, so we're just gonna show the, uh, we're just gonna show the temperature, just so you can have an idea of how hot it comes out. So it's on Fahrenheit here. About 170, one, 170 we'll call it. 77, 78 degrees Celsius for you Canadians, or actually Canadians probably wouldn't even know what that means. <clears throat> Any Europeans watching would probably know the Celsius. So I'm just enjoying my hot chocolate here. Next test is going to be the French vanilla, Tim Hortons not sponsored, cappuccino. 
So throw that in there. And we're gonna keep it the same classic 10. So we're gonna brew that. So while that's brewing, so I only have what, a minute, 23 seconds here. Um, I'm gonna show you the size, got the tape measure here, just so you can get an idea of how big it's gonna be. So we got uh, 13 and a quarter inches tall, and I'll measure it again in a second with the lid flipped open. It is roughly 16 inches deep, and it's pretty slim at about five, five and a half inches wide. Now keep in mind the frother will come out, so that's up to nine inches. And then on this side, you have that to come out. So really you're gonna need about 14 inches of clearance without manipulating it every time you use it or every time you have to um, access that stuff. So for cleaning, actually pretty easy. All the parts that come out are dishwasher safe, probably top rack, I would say. Um, but to do a deep clean on this, it says to add vinegar. It says the amount in the book, like the actual amount of vinegar, but you just add white vinegar to the water and then obviously the rest water. There's a clean button and it runs through, it's like a 75 minute cycle. So it's like a pretty deep clean of the unit. Um, and you do that, basically it cleans out mineral buildup and things like that that get in there over time. So it doesn't say how often to do it, but obviously that's based on your use. If you're using it all the time, maybe once a month, every two weeks, whatever you're comfortable with. Also, if you're gonna use distilled water, you're probably gonna have to clean it less because it'll be less buildup versus something like we just used uh, uh, water out of the tap here, which is well water. So there'll be a little more mineral buildup over time if you use it with that. So we're done our French vanilla. So now I got two drinks on the go that I actually enjoy. So I'll let that cool for a second. So just for the last measurement, I'm going to open the lids just so you can see the clearance you'll need. So that's about 19 and a half inches. And for context, like Mark's under cabinet lighting here, is less than 15. So, yeah, so you'd have to pull it forward to be able to, uh, well, how tall was it? Would that, would that even fit? Yeah, so it just fit under the lighting, but you'd have to pull it out or keep it forward to be able to flip it open and use it that way. So I just wanna talk about this product. Would we recommend it or not? Well, we went through a bunch of tests. So the ground coffee, uh, the K-Pods, the Keurig pods, we did the ice, we did the milk frother. I think it worked really well. We, we came up with a scoring system where we have it different categories. So for example, we have price point, functionality, versatility, cleaning, the size, and the overall quality. We kind of assign what we think is a good score to each of those, put them together, and get a combined score. So in this case, uh, the Ninja Single Serve Pods and Grounds Specialty Coffee Maker, on the average kitchen scale, scored an 8.3 which probably is one of the highest scores we've given out actually. Um, if you're into coffee, I mean, what, what is this missing? It's not an espresso machine if you're into really specialty stuff like that, but if it's just, you just want a variety of different things you can do with a coffee maker, um, we think this is really good. It's probably priced on the higher end of what I would think it's worth, but still worth it if you're gonna use the functionality of it. So that's our video, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Hope you subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.